Believe it or not, getting the best sound out of your vinyl actually isn't just about having the nicest possible gear. It's also about having your turntable set up so it can play your analog discs as well as possible. We invited Gary Alpern from True Audiophile to come show us step by step how to make sure your turntable is sounding just right. Today, I'm going to talk to you about your table, which I'm pretty confident sucks, but it's mainly because it's not set up right. And 95% of tables throughout America are not set up right. So don't feel bad. But at the end of this video, I really expect you to have a better sounding table. So get on it. So let's start way back when records were created. They were all done in mono. The grooves are one millionth of an inch. And they had actual needles, which is why it was called a needle. And you would get a packet of needles with every record player because you had to change the needle after each side. Now we go launch forward and we have stereophonic. Well, we have a millionth of an inch and now we have to hear right and left walls to play right and left channel. Except nobody decided in their wisdom to make it any wider. So now we're still dealing with a millionth of an inch and the cartridge has to read right and left channel, right and left wall, hence it is critical that you have proper alignment. So let's jump in and look at the two tables we brought. This one is by EAT, it's out of Europe. Both these tables attack a problem that records are facing, which is isolation. What you don't wanna do is have the feedback of the needle in the groove with the dynamics feeding back into the entire table. Because if you do, then everything's gonna to start to have a feedback loop. So with this table, you can see you can move the inner part of it. So that's a suspension. There's a heavier head going over the bearing, which also helps with downward pressure. And even this that screws down is concave. And that, again, is for sonic benefit. This table is made by MoFi, Mobile Fidelity. So MoFi does it differently to create the same effect. This is a very heavy table. It's twice the weight of that and because there's composites in here. And they want to have downward pressure, mass loading, so the platter is much heavier, everything is dampened down, even into the tone arm, which both arms will have dampening. So let's go through and look at different things that are happening here. The very, there are eight critical points to setting up a turntable. As we go through all of them, as I said, you may not have all those adjustments at your disposal, but at least do what you can. So the first thing is level your table on both the X and Y axis. It's very critical how the needle's going to function, how your anti-skate's gonna function, and how your azimuth, which we'll get into, functions. Every turntable has feet on it that can screw in and out. And even if you think it doesn't because it's screwed in too tight, it does. The reason for that is to level the table. Every table and every cartridge manufacturer will give you a range of tracking force. Downward pressure on the cartridge, by the arm and the counterweight, how much is gonna sit in the groove. So you can start with what sounds best to you. And I would start with the lower number, not the higher number. And if you zero out the arm, this has a magnetic lift, which is great. So you can see this is not going, and I'm gonna zero it by just balancing it. If you have or can borrow a scale, that's even better, because a scale, you'll put the cartridge on it, and you can keep checking it. Once you have the tracking force set, then you have to do something which is called setting the tangential alignment curve. That's a fancy word to say, when the record was originally recorded, they had to have a lathe, and that lathe had to be at a certain place on the record where it cut the record, and that's where it's gonna sound the best because it was made that way. When you're doing these curves or tangential curves, you're trying to mimic that. And you have to look at your record collection to see what era your records came from, and then you can determine the best curves. So in the 30s and 40s, 
You can try the Lofgren Bearwald. You don't even have to remember the name. You can just see it because there's only five different curves. Lofgren Bearwald, DIN, and IEC are for 30s and 40s records, and then just Lofgren B, which is DIN and IEC. Okay, I can't afford this. I would expect not, but you can set it up by two different ways. One, I would rent something because what you download from the internet and you print out, there's a very specific way this works. So we made this tool for this table because you have to be at the center of the tone arm bearing to the spindle. And you have to know from the manufacturer what the spindle to bearing distance is. And regardless of your table, they'll have it. Therefore, you have to have that set up in order for these null points, tangential curves, to work. If you print something out or you get something for a couple bucks and they say, put it on this and put it on the spindle and then keep rotating your table, well, all these curves are within millimeters. There's no way you'll be able to do it. If you can't rent one, it's not available to you, then usually try to go a little more forward in the head shell. They're usually slotted. And I would start with the middle, a little bit forward, a little bit back, and just listen by ear. It's better than nothing, and it's a lot better than not doing it at all. So after you set this up, you're going to have to do something where you have the cartridge, and you have the cartridge aligned, that's called Zenith. The cartridge has to sit in a millionth of an inch groove. And a lot of people tell you, look at the body and make sure that body is perpendicular perfectly, and then you're golden. Well, it's not true, because most cartridges are handmade, and the armature, and that's the metal part that comes out and holds the diamond or the stylus, are rarely in the center. What you want to focus on is that armature. You want to make sure, even if it makes the cartridge body look whacked, that that is perfectly perpendicular. Once that's done, you have set your zenith. So next, what you want to do is make sure your table's running at speed. More expensive tables have what's called a motor controller, and that's all it does. It controls the motor to control the speed. Many tables under three to $5,000 do not have motor controllers. So your speed is your speed. However, speed is set at the factory and it should be accurate. If your speed is off, if it's slow or fast, the pitch is off. So again, you're not hearing your records. Well, what do you do if you have no adjustment possible? there actually is an adjustment. For example, with this table, it's an excellent table. Well, it measured a 33 and a third, and then when we were done breaking it, it measured a 33.1. So we had long discussions with MoFi, and we've had discussions with other manufacturers. And, you know, they talk about different things. If your belt is worn, definitely replace your belt. That'll have an impact on the speed. If the belt is new and your speed is still slow, pull the top of it off, and underneath every turntable is what's called a bearing. And the better the bearing, the better the table. Here's your platter, and the bearing is actually underneath here. So if I remove this, you'll see a collar and you'll see a pin that goes into it. And then there has to be some kind of lubrication because it's rotating. Run your table for 100 hours. You don't even have to have it playing music, just run it. When it's done running for 100 hours, take the bearing apart and clean it out with isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip until it's perfectly clean. And then you can spray it with some dust off used on your computer and then use some very good grease. With MoFi, we talked to them and they said, oh, we use this grease and we said, well, you know, it's not 1945, this is actually 2018, and there's more polymers going on. You don't have to have the torque drag because you can't have any drag. So we help them work on getting better lubrication. Therefore, you can too. It's expensive, but not the amount you need. Even if you go and get white lithium the best you can, better than nothing, but redo it. And when we redid this table, it was spot on at 33.3. So you're running at 33 and a third, and you want it to be exactly at that. Now you drop your needle. Well, the needle's dragging through the groove, right? 
Well, that's creating drag. If it's a motor controller, you don't set, you set the initial speed, but then you set the final speed with the needle drag because that's what you want to hear or see. With the needle down, is it running spot on at 33 and a third, or now is it suddenly running slower? Again, you're at the mercy of the manufacturer if you don't have a motor controller, but do everything you can to get it as close as you can. So next, you need to set VTA and SRA. VTA is vertical tracking angle. SRA is um, stylus rake angle. All it means is if it's sitting there and here's your tone arm, you're tilting it. So some people believe a lot of cutting lathes are set at 92 degrees. You're trying to mimic that. They use USB microscopes and they go through all this crazy stuff. So we're not into crazy, we're into whatever sounds good. But by raising and lowering, it'll change the sound dramatically. If you do not have that, you can still change the sound. It'll be changed by what we just talked about, the curves. It'll be changed by the tracking weight, just the weight on the back. And when you get to this part, you have to change, it's called azimuth. So you set the zenith, you know it's right there perpendicular to the groove, so it's not tracking in a weird way. Now it has to sit in the groove, and the angle of the stylus can't be cambered one way or the other. Almost all tables should allow you to rotate the head shell. So with this one, there, it's in the back, and you can rotate it. This one, there's a set screw underneath. Okay, what we use to initially set it up is a Fagaza meter and coupled with a record that has test tones. So we're gonna look to see what each channel projects as far as the tone level until we can get the dBs down as close to zero as possible. Then we listen. And I'll continue to say it until you continue to get it, is listening is your best tool. You're not going to get a Fagaza meter and you're probably not going to get these other things, so just listen. But no, with a millionth of an inch and a needle built to sit in a millionth of an inch, one micro adjustment is a lot. You get it, you get it, it's almost perfect and oh my God, I just screwed it up. Just walk away. Because all these things can be set and reset. And just keep doing it. It's your table, it's at your home. Get your favorite record that you know everything that's going on and just keep doing it. The last thing you work on, and it is the last thing, because this should be disconnected while you're doing all these things, is the anti-skate. What that means is just what it says, anti-skating. You don't want that needle skating around the record. These are concentric grooves. You can't see into the grooves because they're a millionth of an inch, but the grooves are continuously pulling the tone arm and the stylus towards the center. You need that stylus to remain perfectly in the groove or it's gonna start being pulled and reading against one wall, and all the work you just did is ruined. So there's a th three different places on the record, and cut it into three places. Go for your outer third, your inner third, and your final third. Set your anti-skate to a lower amount, and listen at those three points. You can drop the needle here, there, and there and the least amount of distortion is going to be the best anti-skate you're gonna use. The anti-skate is always on the back. I don't have it on these, but for example, this anti-skate is here, so it's gonna be on the back of the arm every time. Anti-skate is going to be there. Sometimes it's a little weight with a fishing line attached to it. More expensive tables, you can actually uh, screw it in and out, but it's always gonna be in the back because they want it behind the bearing in order to have the least amount of pressure to create the biggest amount of reaction. Lastly, let's talk about a naked table is not a thing of beauty. With this table, this screws down, holds the record, it's concave. They did this for sonic reasons because what they found is people that have flat ones and it's screwed down will actually warp the edges of the record up. You don't want that. But by doing it this way, it's actually been copied by people in Europe. However, well, my table doesn't come with anything. So you get a, a record weight. This is an expensive one. This is by MoFi, but it's $200. What? 
You don't have to spend that much. You can go on to Amazon or other places, get the heaviest one you can, but get something. Because once you put it on, it kills vibrations, excess vibrations. It's easier on the bearing because now we're with downward pressure and it's more forceful. These are really great. We have these, but you don't have to if you can't afford it. You've invested in your turntable, you invested in a needle, you invested in your library. Why not hear all of it?